What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and welcome to Pokemart, the series, my, my favorite series to do in all honesty, where we take a look at the Pokemon TCG secondary market. And right now the market is crazy. The market is, the market is interesting. We have a lot of topics to cover. So let's get right into it with our first page. TCG player, hidden fates, big surprise, it's all over the place. Charizard, lowest price on TCG player is four hundred twenty plus dollars that is insane i took a look at some of my previous videos back in december you could pick up a psa 10 one for 500 uh still hovering around that 500 hundred dollar mark some for 550 six months <laughs> roughly six months later and that is how much a raw copy who knows how many nines there are this is absolutely insane and evolutions are doing super well one thing i want to mention about the evolutions is i feel like this is pretty clear like these are just collectors obviously evolutions are super popular around being on top but like the the price increase and kind of like how it has less less so happened to a lot of the other ones uh to me it's just like all right just a lot of new collectors that just want their shinies right now from Hidden Fates. Let's deep dive into Charizard. Man, this is all right. Just a quick reminder about the history of Charizard. Started really high, whatever. It's and it's just going to constantly drop. Uh, we're like a lot of people asking, "Oh, Turtle, where do you think it's going to land?" And my thought was like, "I think it'll land around 200." Eventually, we got to that 200. It dipped under 200 for like a week, and then it rebounded back to 200, and then all of a sudden. Yeah, everything what happened and now we're back up to 420. So crazy. All right, let's go to Umbreon, another interesting last Pokemon. This thing was sold out on TCG Player just because I think people kept listening like, oh, you know, Umbreon, I can sell these at a little bit higher, put it on there and the market just kept absorbing them and now it's settling so that there are some copies, but the cheapest ones are for $80. All right, let's go to eBay. These are sold Umbreons one or over a hundred best offer accepted there's that 80 again 85 one or there's a psa 10 150 my gosh uh then 80 so actually uh some 60s some lower ones but the umbreon does seem to be pretty close to the tcg player price all right hidden fates charizard if you wanted to pick one up right now there's not that many and it feels like most of these listings are graded versions and let me show you what i mean like all right well Basically, the question here is, all right, well, if I didn't want to pick it up from TCG Player for $420, how much can I get it for on eBay this second? And we have to scroll down a ways before we even find one. These are all graded at this point or some kind of like collection kind of thing. Uh, BGS, two, what was that? Two, 3,000 for the pristine 10. And uh, starting to make up some value for that really bad purchase I made. The, the PSA 10, like a thousand. Um, again, it was at 500 not too long ago, but yeah, we're still waiting for our first raw copy on eBay that we could pick up this second. Here we go, finally, $590. We finally found one, uh, six, and yeah, so TCG player is the cheapest. I think that's always the case for this guy, but that is just so crazy. All right, these are sold listings, and let's just take a look. So. PSA 10 going for around $800. Again, six months ago, it was about 500. So as far as like, you know, who are all some of the winners in this crazy situation? And I do think one of the winners might be, hey, look, the PSA 10s, they finally are graded. People are getting them back and then putting them on their eBay pages. And it's like, all right, well, that price right now is $500. Again, this was like in December, approximately. And, you know, I think I thought at that time, like, well, it's kind of silly to buy it now. Uh, kind of like the BGS stuff, you know, it'll still continue to go down. And it probably did for some period of time. But even if you bought it at that point where, you know, I think they, the, all the PSA graded ones just finally got back to their owners. And even if you just bought all of them up as many as you could find for $500 a piece, which sounded like really stupid at the time, you would have made a killing right now. You could sell them for $800, $300 profit in a matter of six months. Oh man, that's I can't imagine anyone did that, but it would have worked. And uh, all right, so we do have a sold one for best offer for 600. I'm looking for raw copies. All right, so here's a basically under 500 a raw copy, and then here's that 400. Oh yeah, 300. <laughs> it's crazy that that's actually a pretty good deal right now. All right, so I do feel like this is 
this screams bubble to me, or at least not bubble, but there's just an influx of people that might not be here too long. If you know, super pretty short sight as far as like their their goals and collecting. And once things reopen and stuff like that, maybe they'll leave and you know, because then people go on vacation. That they use their discretionary, um, you know, income in different ways. This does scream bubble to me, and obviously you can still buy sealed hidden fates, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Here is an interesting thing. Um, sealed products still so expensive. Look at this hundred. These are soul listings. 120 and for three. So the way I look at this is like the last wave went for like $15, like on $15 a pop of game nerd. So basically you could get them uh, for 45 and you get all three tens. They even had that like not exactly, but pretty close on at GameStop as well for a short period of time. And it seems like the market just absorbed that and we're back to these ridiculously high prices. And so some takeaways guys, if you just missed it, I say this all the time, monitor the Pokemon TCG deals subreddit, monitor the deals channel in our Discord server, link is always down below. And if you are, you know, you don't have like a YouTube channel yourself, consider joining our Patreon page. Uh, we do have for our VIP tier, I do offer, basically you can buy product from me that I purchased recently at the cost which I bought it for, and then I'll open it for you on the channel and send you the hits. And actually the Patreon fee will actually go towards the shipping. So for June, we're offering tins at $15 limit per two. Uh, so that $15 price, uh, you can still get it through the Patreon, the uh, Zamacenta and Zacian tins for 18 and the League decks for 20 We're going to get into the League, the Picaron League deck and how much insane value is in there. So I feel like this is actually probably the best deal, although like there's no, you know, it's a pre-con kind of product, uh, but you'll just get everything that's inside. Okay, so... That was my quick Patreon plug, link down below as always. Hidden Fates PSA 10. So this is another example of like, our, who are the winners? And I think one one example, I, I can't imagine too many people are able to do this, but like Hidden Fates first comes out, open up a whole lot. I'm talking back when it was like pin collections and like when the tins first came out. Open, open up a whole mess of them, pick up some stuff on the secondary market at cheap and then send it all to PSA, get it back, you know, you probably pay like $8 a pop if you go their cheapest probably at the time. And six months later, maybe now you're just getting them back just in time for these insane spikes and then you can sell it at significantly higher prices. Uh, so obviously charges are always be kind of high, but then a lot of these other ones, you know, these lesser sought after shinies going for, you know, to be honest, not too crazy high prices, but what it would have cost, um, for, for a lot of them, you know, you probably could have gotten a lot cheaper and then plus $8 for the, the PSA grading service, plus some shipping and stuff like that. And then you're selling these for like $50 a pop, which, you know, to be honest, like, oh, well, if we're starting from scratch, I need a, and I really want Lucario, that's not too bad versus trying to pull it, pick it, pick it up on like TCG player and then sell it, especially at these raised prices, Mewtwo for over a hundred, even this Charizard for like 40 bucks. That's this tin, this thing is like, I have like a hundred of these guys at this point and then you know smack on eight eight dollars for the grading service and then sell it for 35 that's pretty good so I think uh, as far as like the winners in this you know people that graded early because if you send them off now which I'm still considering doing it'll be a good you know four months before I see those cards back all right let's move on to our next topic uh so cosmic eclipse pretty old news and there's only kind of like one takeaway that I have for this card, maybe two, and that is that the Charizard breaks in is bouncing back pretty well. Uh, lowest price is 84, and this is just another data point that, like this influx, all these price spikes are just like, kind of like short, short term. Uh, you know, not going too far in the past as far as like a new collect, not necessarily new collectors, but just more collectors coming into the hobby that just want to pick up. You know. The most recent Charizard and that Charizard breaks in. This guy started, I believe, at like a hundred, went down to I think like 40, maybe even less. And now it's back to 84. It's another interesting data point. And then because let's contrast it to the you know, one of the most, <laughs> in my opinion, the most OP tag team card, ADP. And we'll go at their, you know, the highest like as far as price-wise, 
the alternate art does go for the most. You can pick it up at 28. You know, so I feel like this one is hasn't spiked nearly as much. It's just that Charizard portion uh, that is d driving the demand. So it has nothing to do with the viability of the card. It's entirely for collector's purposes. And, you know, basically for it to double recently, just, all right, well, people just want that shiny Charizard. <clears throat> all right, and here we have another good example of that Reshiram that, to be honest, this is one one of the examples where i bit and i made a terrible decision i picked up i think like two maybe three of these when it was like at two hundred dollars and then it drops like significantly i think they were down to like 60 or something like that or i just got decimated and it's picking back a lot of its value back to 130 and uh interesting what this was actually you know a good card too but uh you know just another example of look i think they're just new or collectors that just want their Charizard, they're not really looking for base set or anything, anything vintage, they just want the most recent ones, or they're not looking too far in the past. Alright, let's go to Dedene. This is an interesting one because this is like the a good month before its inevitable plunge in price. Like we already seen it with Jirachi, which we'll get to soon, but uh, Rainbow Dedene still holding $30. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, if people have like a bunch of designs like definitely I'll load them as quickly as you can uh, I think the price will basically get cut in half maybe down to a third uh, once those toolkits drop and if you need a reminder what this toolkit thing is here it is basically uh, long story short, it comes with two Dedene GXs for the low price of $22. I think it also comes with some packs and some pretty cool alternate art trainers. But the basically, and uh, yeah, you can still pick them up at Game Nerds for that reduced price. I'll put a link down below, but uh, I feel like I've been screaming this for, for I don't know, a month at, at this point. Uh, so if you haven't picked yours up, definitely do so. And uh, compared to, you know, for the same price of a single Dedenne right now, which is obviously means the price will just plummet hard, but I do think you'll definitely get your money's worth for the product. We'll use Jirachi as an example for the Pikaram deck. All right, but yeah, Jirachi, um, but you know, maybe like that Rainbow Dedenne, you know, I think it'll definitely be affected, but you know, people do like to swag out their decks. This is a good example. The pre-release Jirachi still holding 35 on TCG player. And then you have your, or I think that's the staff one. The other one, eh, 18, I think this was like 36, not too long ago. So actually, no, I take that back. But yeah, the staff one's, that's probably just a supply thing. This went down significantly. Uh, but then like the, this is the, the team up hollow and then the deck exclusive, whether it's from the Battle Arena deck or League League Battle, I think they fall in the same category as far as TCG player, and this is down to four. So here's the thing, when I was talking about the battle, the toolkit, as far as like, well, you know, I can just pick up the Dedenes for really cheap when it comes out. Uh, while that's true, I still think it's worthwhile to buy the product, you get some packs, you get some other stuff, and like, we'll just use this as an example, four Jirachis in the Pikaram deck, and the TCG player is still holding around, eh, I guess it's $5 after shipping. So let's say you picked it up. MSRP is 25, the four Jirachis, that's like $20 right there. So a lot of value in this box. And uh, all right, let's move on. But yeah, that's that's my point there. And okay, so you got four Jirachis in the peek around box and you can sell the code card still right now for over $10. I imagine this price will just be all over the place uh, with Limitless TC, the Limitless tournament Picaram taking it. Like I think everyone wants their Picarams right now for next week. So who? I think this price will be all over the place next couple weeks. But right now, if they're going as high as twelve fifty thirteen dollars, whoa, what? Twenty two. <laughs> the twenty five dollar box, the code card, and it sold for twenty two dollars. Okay weird times uh but yeah this is what it was at one point if you did pick them up of game nerd so this is uh like you did have to buy both of them and you got it for 40 dollars. and uh yeah so that's where i got that uh for if you do go to our patreon page and you do want to support the channel that's where that price is reflected from i think it's insane value uh obviously you'll get exactly what you're expecting you know there's no there's no like opening or anything like that okay sword and shield very interesting another data point as far as look people just want their collectible cards from the most recent set zacian <clears throat> zacian v gold even zamazenta like 
All right, not too long ago, ZCNV, it felt like it was settling around $40. And for like the best card in the set was kind of like underwhelming, but a lot of people opened. I think <clears throat> on our channel, we pulled two, three of them ourselves. We didn't pull any Zacians, but it's interesting that the, or Zamazenta's, but the Zamazenta is higher than what Zacian was before. Yes, maybe Zamazenta is a little bit more viable now, but not a huge amount. I think it's kind of like a one of, if any. <clears throat> but then the Zacian, yeah, back to $60. I think it kind of like rebounded itself quite well, plus 50% over the last like what, month or two? All right, then we can look at all of them. And uh, this is one, <clears throat> another example of, well, this just became a promo in its own tin. And that version is going for $10. I believe the tin goes for 25. You can pick it up from our Patreon service for 18 for the tin. I think, I think it's just like four packs or whatever. So interesting there that the gold is back to 60. Quick ball. Quick ball is, I monitor, I look at this every day and it, I don't think it's gonna move. Uh, but one thing was to just if, I don't know, if somehow you come across a way to pick one up for $20, I think it's worthwhile. I'm not sure, I mean, I who knows what Pokemon would do. They've done this in the past with Pokemon cards where they have a new max rarity down the line. But this is the secret rare and quick ball is just going to be, I don't know what, like four of in every deck forever. Uh, just so good. Um, so I do definitely think this is a worthwhile pickup if you can find it on the cheap. And as far as like, you know, even, even the base quick ball, this was reprinted in those league decks. Going for a quarter right now. I think, you know, if you have any interest in playing competitively, Pick up your quick balls. It costs a dollar for the playset. Um, possibly shipped depending on where you buy it from. And I feel like it's yes, maybe it could go the ultra ball route where you know that quarter will end up becoming like a dime down the road. But who, I feel like it's low risk. Uh, I guess low. Uh, no, some reward. Like let's say this thing doesn't get reprinted ever, and you know custom catcher was that going for ten dollars at one point? Uh, but yeah. If you have interest in playing, you don't have your play set, pick it up now. All right, almost done, Rebel Clash. And uh, all right, it is it is official. Full art is better than Rainbow, <laughs> even though Rainbow is max rarity. Boss's orders, man, no, it doesn't matter how much product we open, we never will pull a boss's orders, it seems. Even like the base version, we pulled one reverse out of like five booster boxes, this has been insane. <clears throat> But the full art Giovanni bosses orders for 45 versus 32 for the rainbow. Very similar story <clears throat> with Dragapult V Max for a nice price of 20. And then Dragapult V Max, the full art for 20, 22 and a half. Uh, so uh, this is just another, like, that was basically my point as far as this page goes. I will say though, let's say post rotation when Pikaram loses a lot of its stuff, uh, like, um, the handfuls of Zero Aura, uh, Thunder Mountain, and let's say that falls off the radar, maybe Dragapult will come up on top. Uh, I don't recommend it, but maybe is now a good time to pick up your copies of Dragapult VMAX. If you'd prefer Rainbow over Volmart, Full Art, pick up for $20, that feels pretty good to me. All right, and our last topic. So, uh, a couple of people have been asking me, all right, well, during this time, what are you doing? You know, what are your purchases kind of like? And the answer is pretty straightforward. It's just like, look, there are a lot of cards I want to pick up. And if the price is higher than I think I'm willing to pay, I just don't buy. I go down a grade. Um, you could go to the Japanese version, but I don't really recommend that. Or another thing is just work on other parts of your collection. One thing that I really enjoy working on is a binder collection. This is like a super cheap binder off Amazon. And I just start filling it with all the hits from the entire Sun and Moon era. And my point is like, this is Sun and Moon base, which was like, I don't remember how long ago. And uh, yeah, let's just fill in all the GXs. And like my point here is, all right, there's probably, this will never go up in value, but as far as myself as a collector, this is what I actually look at. I don't look at my PSA cards that often, especially the expensive ones. They're not even, they're not even here. Uh, they're just safely stored away because they're they are pretty expensive but you know a binder where like the rainbows cost ten dollars 
yeah, I don't mind like if I had like my, it's not a bookshelf, but this will just be right in there and I can look through it. And you know, a lot of the cards are really cool. Uh, yes, there are some stuff that's expensive. There's stuff that's useful, like the Switch. Even Ultra Ball's not too bad, but the energies will always be kind of expensive. And there'll be a couple rainbows here and there that all right, you'll have to wait to find a good deal on eBay. Uh, but the thing about these binder collections, I don't mind having light play, even mod play, for example. As long as the front looks good and the back has a lot of edge wear, I don't care about that. And uh, yeah, so finish some binder collections, nest ball, it's gold nest ball, six bucks. Like that, that's, that works. And then even when you just go to the the regular GXs, they're only like a couple dollars a piece. Pick up, you know, a couple every week and you'll be, you'll have a nice collection built up really quickly. You know, no long-term value. This is more like, well, I'm I'm a collector, not just, I'm not an investor, I'm a collector kind of thing. We talked about this a lot in a couple last previous videos. Uh, but yeah, that's the answer to like, what am I working on is PSA cards that are within the range that I think is reasonable. And then picking up what pieces I still need for my binder collection. All right, guys, a bit of a long video, but uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the content. If you do, you do want to support the channel, the easiest way is like and subscribe. And uh, do consider joining the Patreon. We do offer a VIP service for some sealed product as well. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks for watching. I'm Juan Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.